Hello everyone, today we're going to go over level order traversal, also known as breath first search. So let's get started. Now, if you're new here, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and most importantly, click that notification bell if you enjoyed this content. So we've looked at depth first search techniques like pre-order, in-order, and post-order traversal. And those are really good to use if the node you're looking for is deep down in the tree, because as we know, we go deep down and work our way back up. But what if the node you're looking for is close to the root? then it wouldn't be as efficient to go all the way down, right? Suppose our tree had like 1,000 levels, and the node we're looking for, we know that it exists between level 1 and level 5. Then it'd make more sense to explore closer to the root first, before going down the tree. And that way, we favor the breadth of the trees opposed to the depth. And that's exactly what level order traversal is. We visit all nodes on a single level, before moving on to the next level. So we visit all nodes in level 1, and then visit all nodes in level 2, and then visit all nodes in level 3, and so on and so forth. Until we found the node we're looking for. And that's it. Now we're going to use the same tree node class that we've been using for the last three videos. So we have our data here, that'll be associated with every node in our binary tree. And we also have our left and right reference variables, that'll be the left and right subtrees respectively in our binary tree. And of course we have our constructor, that takes in our argument to data, that'll be used to initialize our instance variable data with. Now let's get to the method. So in order for us to traverse level by level, we're going to use a queue to hold references as we go down the tree. So for example, if 80 is in our queue, we'll dq80, print its value, and then add its left and right child to the queue. Then as we dq40 and 120, we'll add their children to the queue, and so on and so forth. So we're ultimately traversing level by level. As we step through the code, this will become very, very clear. Now, I'm going to use Java's queue interface along with its array deck class to represent my queue. However, you can use one of the queues we built, so the one using a linked list or the one using an array. Either one will work completely fine with this method. Again, it's just a queue. So, our queue interface will be of type tree node, and the array deck class is basically an array list implemented as a double ended queue. And a double ended queue is just like a regular queue with added functionality, so you can add and remove from both ends of the queue. Now, we'll be using an array deck class as a regular queue, so we'll add to the rear and remove from the front. So you can also just replace this array deck with a linked list if you wish. Now, a really good question to ask yourselves is why are we using a queue and not a stack? And I challenge you to replace our queue with a stack and see what happens. And if you do that, you may notice that instead of approaching level by level, you're actually going deeper down the tree. And that's why a stack is a really useful data structure to implement depth first search with. Now, let's go through the method step by step. So the first thing we'll do is create that queue we talked about. Then what we'll do is add a reference to the root node in our queue, so we have something in our queue before we go into our while loop. And we'll use a current node reference variable here to actually keep track of where we are in the tree. And our current node reference will move left to right as we go down the tree, level by level, as we'll see later on. Now we loop until our queue is empty, because at the point where our queue is empty, it means we've traversed all the nodes in our tree. Now we're going to perform the process we spoke about before. So we'll remove the node in our queue, so remove the header for our queue. Then we'll print the data associated with that current node. So we'll print 80. Then we check if 80's left is not equal to null. And since 80's left is not equal to null, we'll add 80's left subtree or 80's left reference to the queue. So 40 is added to the queue. Then we check if 80's right is not equal to null. And since 80's right is not equal to null, we'll add 80's right to the queue as well. So 120 is also added to the queue. Then, again we check if our queue is empty. And since our queue is not empty, we'll remove the front of our queue and assign current node to it. Then we'll print the data associated with our current node, so we'll print 40. Then, we check if 40's left is not equal to null. And since 40's left is not equal to null, we'll add a 20 to our queue. Then we check if 40's right is not equal to null. And since 40's right is not equal to null, we'll also add 40's right to the queue. Then again, we check if our queue is empty. And since our queue is not empty, we'll remove the front of our queue and assign current node to it. So current node now references a node with value 120. Then we print the data 120, and we check if 120's left is not equal to null. Since 120's left is not equal to null, we'll add 100 to the queue. Then we check if 120's right is not equal to null. And since our right is equal to null, we'll jump back to the starter for a while loop and check if our queue is empty. And again, our queue is not empty, so we remove the front of our queue and assign current node to it. Then we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 20. Then we check if 20's left is not equal to null. And its left is equal to null, so there's nothing to do here. So we check if its right is not equal to null. And since its right is not equal to null, we'll add 30 to our queue. Then we jump back to the starter for a while loop and check if our queue is empty. And since our queue is not empty, we'll remove the front of our queue and assign current node to it. Then we'll print the data associated with our current node, so we'll print 60. Then we check if 60's left is not equal to null. 
and since 60 is left is not equal to null, we'll add 50 to the queue. Then we check if 60 is right is not equal to null, and since his right is not equal to null, we'll also add 70 to the queue. Then we're back to the start of our loop, and since our queue is not empty, we'll remove the front of our queue and assign current node to it, so current node that references a node with value 100. Then we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 100. Then we check if 100's left is not equal to null. Since it is not equal to null, we'll add its left to the queue, so 90 is added to the queue. Then we check if its right is not equal to null, and its right is equal to null. So we're back to the loop again, and our queue is not empty, so we assign current node to the front of our queue after we remove it, and then we print the data associated with our current node. So we print 30. Then we check if 30's left is not equal to null, and 30's left is null. So we then check if 30's right is not equal to null, and 30's right is equal to null. And since our queue is not empty, we will remove the front of our queue and assign current node to it. Then we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 50. Then we check if 50's left is not equal to null, and its left is equal to null. So we then check if 50's right is not equal to null, and its right is equal to null. So we're back to the start of our loop again, and our queue is not empty. So we remove the front of our queue and assign current node to it. Then we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 70. Then we check if 70's left is not equal to null, and 70's left is equal to null. So we then check if 70's right is not equal to null, and 70's right is equal to null. So we're back to the start of our loop again, and our queue is not empty, so we remove the front of our queue and assign current node to it. Then we print the data associated with our current node, so we print 90. Then we check if 90's left is not equal to null, and 90's left is equal to null. So then we check if 90's right is not equal to null, and 90's right is equal to null. So we're back to the start of our loop again, and this time our queue is empty. So we've traversed the entire tree and printed all our nodes in level order. And we're done! Now let's move on to the complexity analysis. Now our big O will be big O of n, because there are n nodes in our tree and we're traversing all n nodes, and we're using constant time for each node. Now let's move on to the space complexity. So for the space complexity, the maximum number of nodes in our queue at any given time is going to represent the space we're using. And the maximum number of nodes in our queue is going to be based on the level with the most nodes. So in the worst case, our tree structure would be a perfect binary tree, because as we know, in a perfect binary tree, all nodes or all levels have the maximum number of nodes for any given level. And if you think about it, the last level has the most nodes. So if our tree had three nodes, the last level would have two nodes. And if our tree had seven nodes, the last level would have four nodes. And if our tree had 15 nodes, the last level would have eight nodes, and so on and so forth. So the last level has approximately half the number of nodes in the tree. And if we remove the constant, we have big O of n. So our space complexity would be big O of n in the worst case. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.